welcome in. Uh, let's continue on with part two of my amazing finds that I've been lucky enough to find lately. Just flawless records. I got a bunch of them. Some were okay, uh, but these are the best of the best. So let's continue here. We'll start out with this one. Ernest Answer May, Orchestra de la Swiss Roman, Swan Lake. Pretty famous. And this is on uh, London Decca. So you see the stereophonic here and you'd think, well, maybe it's a blue back. This one's a white back. And... Um, there was earlier pressings. This is a, a slightly later one. So it's got the uh, the red narrow band and the band doesn't go across all the way. It's not, it's, it's, and it's not a wide band. So usually you'd see this in a red label wide band. Um, so a, a later pressing, probably more transistor than tube for the cutting heads, uh, but it sounds really good, really great. I mean, it's flawless. It's so a, an incredible find because a lot of times when you find these ones, these stereophonic uh, Londons, they're kind of beat up. They've been played for good reason. It's great music. Uh, this one, you can, like, okay, there's not as many pops and clicks, but I can hear tape noise still. Uh, but a wonderful listen. Really good. Excellent performance. And sometimes I wonder, a lot of people say, you know, Answer Me, he brought the best out of uh, Orchestra de la Suisse Roman, but maybe they were just good because a lot of them, it just sounds like they're playing really great. And this one, they're tight. They're good. I love it. Next one, another one, incredible find to find it in such good condition. Uh, so Schubert Octet in F major with the Vienna Octet. And this is a, an actual blue back one with the wide band. So wide band London. An intimate recording. Obviously it's small scale. I, I would guess they probably would still do it at Kingsway Hall. Uh, it's wonderfully mastered, really great. Uh, for the age of the disc, I guess I okay, put the date up now. I should know. Uh, I'm early 60s, I would imagine. Really good, really good chamber music. Another great one, Arne or Arn. I'm not sure the pronunciation. Um, so this is Eight Overtures Academy of Ancient Music with uh, Christopher Hogwood. Uh, he's also playing the harpsichord on this, and uh, so it's on the Luis Layer. That's how I say it. I've heard it say be pronounced a bunch of different ways, but I mean. Luiso Lear is kind of the way. I'm sticking with that. I think that's right. So this is a division of DECA. And it's basically DECA, but it's their label that they used for the historically interpretive performances. So they're using ancient music. There's a lot of Christopher Hogwood on there. And they usually come in this purple, dark purple. And there's older ones too. This is, this is a 1972 pressing. It's purple. And that's how they look. And... This is an exceptional one. Uh, some of them, I know they have a great reputation. I've never heard anything say any, anything bad about them, but uh, sometimes they, they are a little harsh just because I think it's the instruments, the older instruments, and maybe they're playing them sometimes without vibrato or something. So they can kind of sound a bit grating at first if you're not used to it until you listen to the album a couple times. Uh, but this one's very smooth, uh, an excellent performance and recording. This is one of the best uh, Louis layers that I have. Really good. This series is very dear to my heart. It's uh, Music to Camera, which is a subdivision of Philips. And it's basically late 70s, early 80s represses of earlier chamber music. So to Camera, like the bedroom, I guess, in Italian. Uh, but it, it's, it's chamber music. And house music i guess the camera also i think it means house in other languages but anyway so you know people talk about like frankie knuckles and the chicago electro scene starting house house is, the original house is like chamber music like, like this like it's four and uh and weber right doing their thing uh it's four you don't see a lot of of his work out there so it's really really great to see this and this is the uh, philharmonisches octet berlin i'm not sure how many of these i have but Almost all of them are absolutely a treasure to listen to. Dead quiet vinyl. Like we're talking 1982. They're still analog. They didn't use um, a digital look ahead. You, you can tell. It's all it's pure analog, but great represses. If you look at the dead wax at an angle, you can usually see the date of the original recording. And it's not like a one-to-one -one disc because they, they kind of mixed it up. Like both of these are were released on different discs for... Phillips in the late 60s. This one's a, the, this four is a 1968. But the, the recording, like Phillips were doing amazing things in the mid 60s for chamber music. And to get a repress like this, 
dead quiet. Like I'm sure the original sound no not much worse. Probably I don't know actually, but these are just exquisite sound. Like really immediate, delicate. Uh, the way they recorded it and placed it and the recording venue, all top notch. Great players. Everything good. The camera. All day. Every day. I will keep buying them. Here's another one too. Uh, that I, I I somehow got four of them in like the span of a week it's just crazy the one problem i have with them it's minor is that the covers all kind of look the same so i can't remember which ones i i have and then i'm sort of hesitant i, th I think like i have that one already uh there's some double disc ones out there. there's a wonderful um double disc uh, beethoven early or, or the late string quartets that's so good um with i think it's quartet italiano on that one that, oh yeah that one's there uh, this one here is with the Bow Arch Trio, so you're going to see a lot of them on this on this label, and, which is Phillips. Like Phillips, pretty much, uh, they usually are on Phillips, and they're a great trio. So this is Mendelssohn um, with the piano trios, uh, yeah, and it's it's just everything you want out of a trio. Small, you know, chamber music. It's, it's so good and so clean. Another thing, I think because you can read the date on the dead wax. It's imprinted there. I think they actually just used the original metal work uh, when they did the original pressing and just repressed from that instead of going back to the master tapes. Uh, so yeah, it, it worked out beautifully. So great. Okay, here's a Deutsch gramophone that I picked up. I was hopeful, you know, optimistic that possibly it says in the corner that it's a 1980 new recording. So I thought, okay, it's the last of the analog era, probably a few discs after this, it's gonna be all digital. So I thought maybe they just pulled it together, made a stunning audiophile grade disc and just, you know, threw their their whole philosophy away and just made it happen. It's pretty good. Um, what we have here is uh, Claude WC, Maurice Ravel, La Mer Rhapsody Espagnol, and La Mer de Lowe, or like Mother Goose Sweet. Uh, it's Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra with uh, Carlo Maria Giulini. It, it is, a it's good. Um, what I feel like they did is they rode the gain. So instead of just letting it go and, and just getting all splashy and weird in the in the big parts, or like the big swells of the orchestra, they they just rode the gain. So somebody was there and they turned it down. Instead of just sucking all the bass out of it, they just turned the whole thing down a little bit. It takes you out of the moment. Uh, you might not notice it, but it, it definitely the big impact moments that should sound really big. And, you know, judging from other... Uh, recordings that were done uh, with Los Angeles in their in their hall like with Zubin Mehta on London it sounds a lot better but it's not bad here and especially in the quiet parts it's not bad I will say you kind of have to judge a Deutsch gramophone in the realm of other Deutsch gramophones it's like a seven out of ten if the best Deutsch gramophone is like a, a ten it's like seven seven and a half it's good the performance is really good, really hypnotic, excellent Rhapsody Espanol. Like, wow, I'm glad I have the disc just for that. Uh, so yeah, it might be worth it to check it out for like CD. I'm sure it would they would have done a better job remastering it then. Really good though. But yeah, of course, there's, you know, you have to go into, you're buying a, a German, sorry, it's a German press, I should say, this, this style. Um, yeah, like, you know you're not gonna get a knockout blockbuster. You just know that, so. In the realm of it, it's good. Okay, this one is a little special. I was really happy to find it, and in such good condition. So, bear with my pronunciation. It's uh, Antonin Regia uh, Symphony E, and uh, we have uh, Jan Hugo Vaclav Voracek uh, Symphony in D also. This is uh, Prajki Kamora, or like, just read it, please. I actually can't find out who the conductor is on this by looking at it. I, I, I really can't, so sorry about that. So this is a super farm. Most of them were done in Czechoslovakia. You know, obviously there's been changes to that region, but um, but these are this is a Czechoslovakian disc. Now, they, you know, they always I've always held them in decent regard for trying their best with what they had, and this is a, a different label. I don't think I have any of this label that look like this with the sort of that spherical thing. So this is an earlier. Stereo Superform, it's quite good. It's 
almost untouched. I can't even see any indication that it's ever been played. Uh, it wasn't gassed, thank goodness. Um, I think it was probably, this is, I would hope this is the original plastic. The cover itself, yeah, there's gratuitous nudity. <laughs> this is a family channel, so I had to cover that, but it's, it's really floppy paper. So it's surprising that it's kept so well over the years. It sounds really good. There's a little bit of grain, uh, but it's cut pretty loud and a very vibrant sound. And I, I'm not familiar with either of these orchestras. I don't know, like, yeah, that, like, so it's really a historical disc. I love that. That's really cool to have that once in a while, to have something that, I, you know, to, to try to think, okay, I'm gonna seek this out, like on Discogs or something. No, would you really? But you see it in the wild and it's, that's something different. It's very cool, very cool. And yeah, the sound is great for what it is. Like, it's not super top notch. It, it's a bit noisy, but really good, really good considering. So I'd say, yeah, the early super fongs, for sure. If you can get them in good condition. I will add also, that there is not a solitary moment in any of this performance where there's the slightest hesitation by anybody in this orchestra. They all, they know it, they're just delivering it with extreme confidence. So it is, the more I listen, it's a really fantastic performance. So yeah, excellent find. Okay, this next one, Brahms, uh, the Hungarian dance is Orchestra de Chamber France Liszt de Budapest under the direction of uh, Janos Rola. So this is um, a gatefold, Arato, very nice. Um, it's 1980 recording and 1982 pressing, so you know, that's that's really good. You're gonna get great cutting heads. Uh, it's on the black, Arato, uh, which I've had great luck with. There's a little bit of bite in the top end, but the overall recording is fantastic. The performance is really good, very realistic. Um, it, it has a good balance. I would want a little more bass personally. So yeah, th that's a little bit down and, and there's a little, that little Arato bump somewhere in the mid highs that they kind of just, I feel like they just cranked a little bit to just to get the violins to pop out a bit. Uh, but really compelling performance and very nice disc. Very excellent. This one I got, well, a little bit ago, probably a month ago. Uh, but it's probably one of the best sounding discs that I have. Like it really is. It's definitely in the top 10. Another Living Baroque. So it's uh, Johann Christian Bach, uh, Six Symphonies with uh, Academy of St. Martin in the Fields and Martin Neville Mariner. And this is on the, uh, it's like they have, more, a lot of them have the blue, not all, but a lot of these uh, Living Baroque, they have the dark blue made in Holland. I haven't seen them made anywhere else. My luck basically and general feeling of the living baroque i haven't really been let down yet they all sound special in their own way but this one is just an absolute knockout just the the force of the feeling like it's just it's so realistic and each new instrument that you hear that's introduced sounds pleasant in its own way and correct it just sounds it's almost effortless you think like why can't everything sound like this well it's a smaller orchestra so it's easier to manage uh but it's it's so well balanced absolutely and it it just has such a great feel. Like this will be, yeah. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll play this for people, and they'll, they'll be impressed with it. I'm sure. It's, this is demo disc quality for sure. So Living Baroque. I'm sure there's other great ones. I have a few, but always on the lookout for more. They're really good. Here's a different one on Vanguard. So this is Gustav Mahler, uh, Symphony Number no. Seven, one of his least popular symphonies uh, with his Utah Symphony, Maurice Abervanel. It's a gatefold double disc. It's on Vanguard which is also tied into sort of Bach Guild in a strange way. I'm not sure exactly how. Uh, so it's on these black ones. It's a good disc. It's absolutely good. It's, yeah. A lot of them I've found before have been a bit beat up. This one's really good. I think it's unplayed, as unfortunately a lot of Mahler 7 is. Uh, it's really an interesting performance, although I did listen to it back to back, um, just as a comparison to James Levine's uh, with Chicago and that was on a digital uh, red seal that performance is better and although it's digital I feel like it was recorded better too this one's a little it's a little fussy in places and just it feels like there's frequencies missing here and there uh, but the the woodwinds sound really good which is a big part of Mahler so that's good it's it's overall really good I don't know if I would just run out and buy this particular one I think there's probably better versions out there anyway thank you for watching that's it for now okay see you next time bye